the uh, Grand Pyramid as soon as I would have hoped. So he's going to have a little taste of ICC. He's got a couple of house, different house sticks in there. Clancy Shannon's in. Randy Robinson's in. Uh-oh. I wonder if Clancy's parole officer watches this. Probably. Best not. Probably. We're going to start getting some traction. Okay, so Obscure Cigars. So this is what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Let's this talk is about what we're, we're okay. So about. we have this is obscure because it's very expensive. Frank the Dank, Rob um, Real, what's up? The real Rob, nice. Yeah, Tim Flores. Tim Flores is in. He I brought like his dog him. in. Bentley. Yeah. Sweetheart of a dog. Nice. Sweetheart of a dog. All right. So if you're on if you're on cigar news, you, feel free to hop over to ICC. Sean Reps. Get a we'll hot get dog, a hot Brandon. Bump, Brandon. <laughs> Don't talk to me like that, Sean Reps. So um, are you gonna smoke this? What are you gonna smoke? I cut the house earlier. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I cut it for somebody I was having a meeting with. Yeah. He didn't take it, so I'm going to smoke it. Yeah. I mean, even if you were to take a couple of puffs on it, I'd still smoke it. This will be That's my... that good. Sec okay. So... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a V-cut on that. I'm hoping... So here's what I'm hoping is... I'm hoping that the people are listening in right now are going to be just chock full of answers. And questions, importantly. I think questions are probably better than answers. If you want to lead with answers, yep. and then we could figure out a question for them, that could be something new. Like Jeopardy, RIP. Yeah. Oh, Trebek is dead. Too soon. Too soon. Yeah. What is dead game show host? What is... Um, James Earl Jones is 90. By 90. The way. 50, 50. How old does that make Luke Skywalker? Thousands. Oh, thousands, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just Ted watching in. numbers falling off right now. Oh, yeah. No, numbers are just tumbling. Okay. Don't share yet. Nobody share. Don't share, share yet. Don't. Don't do it. Share in 30 seconds. And Don't then bring it. the questions. Johnny Goodner, I'm talking to you. Oliver is in eating tacos and such. Thomas Nympha. How do you think that guy got through school? Wow. I mean, I bet you That's he was... Cool. I bet you he was riddled a lot as a young, young boy teenager like a little nympha yeah did you know that nympha is actually a very unique method of rolling a cigar from the old cuban days okay that's what we're going to start in five seconds we're going to start talking about that three two one here it is it's there Tuesday you night, and it is Cigars 101. What's up, newbies? Industrial Cigar Company on the Facebooks, on the YouTubes. On well. the YouTube, all right. Yeah. All right. You know what I found out I didn't lately? know we landed that contract. Well, yes, we did. And what I found out is our YouTube followers get quite pissed off because when we're live and they're typing in comments, we don't see them. We don't see anything. No. Yeah. If you're on YouTube and you want to see some interaction, go over to Facebook to either Cigar Newbies, join it, or... Industrial Cigar Company. Or Industrial Cigar Company. D Nice is in. D, no, it's Denise. Oh. If you're watching this, give it a share because we're going to run through some obscure cigars that yeah. you should be smoking, why you should try them, what the differences are. Yeah, and we'll answer your obscure, obscure questions. Now, let's hop straight into it. Let's do. You were talking about the shape uh -huh. called the Nympha. Yep. What is it? Well, and it's not, uh, it's not any relation to Thomas, who is in tonight's uh, audience. Um, but a Nympha is actually a cigar that's about yay long. It is a very small ring gauge, about a 40, oh, about a 38 ring gauge. Mm -hmm. And torpedoed at both ends. You actually snip both ends, because if you light just the one end, enough pressure builds up that it'll actually pop the wrapper. So... You cut both ends. Um, Crux uh, has a cigar called the Nymphomaniac. And? And it is wonderful. None of them are watching, right? None of them are watching. May or may not be coming back out. May or may not. Um, but the Nymphomaniac is a great cigar and it's a perfect example. And, and actually a lot of the Crux cigars do pay homage to a lot of the traditional Cuban rolling methods. Probably the most popular is the Marblehead which is more of a rounded torpedo. It bellies in a little bit, but it's rounded. Yep. It's and a, that only is... On, only on one cigar or yeah. that they roll, which is the, the Bull and Bear 
Marblehead Gordo. And the reason why is because to create something obscure, and this is what we're talking about tonight, is obscure mm -hmm. cigars. We have a few of them that are different. We're going to talk about what makes them different and why it's worth smoking. But within a marble head, which really legitimately looks like they just put a marble on the back side of it, the problem is they have to roll it, create it, then take tobacco and roll that additionally and then stuff it in there and then cap over yeah. the top and then put another cap. It's a pain in the ass and the fail rate is super high. I would think so. I would so, think so that's actually one bit of information is when you get to more obscure cigars, mm -hmm. you can expect to pay slightly more because human capital is not free. Right. That's right. And particularly when you get into some of those odd shapes, um, the unique shapes, Typically, typical rule of thumb is they're going to put the best rollers in the factory on those unique shapes. So if you see a torpedo or a salamone, which is a torpedo at the top, bellies out and comes back into a point, any of those types of cigars, they're going to typically put the best rollers in the factory. Lanceros, which is not, you would think, is still a traditional looking shape, but it's a lot of tobacco that they've got to maneuver in that small of a diameter of a cigar. So I just want to take a second here and say congratulations to Marty Upton, father of the year. He is trying to eat dinner with the family and also watching Cigars 101. Congratulations for having your priorities straight. You, you should let us know how old are your children for fear that we may ruin the evening's dinner by... Him cussing. Yep, Marty Upton just slid over to this side, so his kids smart, must have caught him. Smart. So if you're smart. watching this, give it a share, give it a like. If you're on YouTube, give this a sub subscribe. What the hell was that? What? Did I don't know what that? you do on on what. You you subscribe on YouTube. Okay. I heard something like explode, like a pipe in here. Oh, because our volume's on in here. Sorry for those of you who may yeah. hear the audio. We've got idiocracy rolling in here as to go with the theme of this show. Yeah. So give it a share. It is. We are, uh, we are idiots, and we are having fun. It's good to see Brandon back. Uh, for those of you guys that didn't catch Saturday at the shop and are seeing Brandon for the first time since he's been back from the vid, vacation, everybody else on the vid so you went and hid all that other stuff all of it basically a three-week vacation is what you took look a couple of those vacation weeks were not good one no. vacation week was great two of them you actually lost your sense of smell and taste and today i still have no taste or smell yikes so I'll i'm tell acting you like i like is. everything so uh, one other thing so you're talking about a size the nympha and how much mm -hmm. it's different chris Coulter, what's happening uh, there are some other unique things that we have in the humidor. Now, we don't have to pimp the, the cigars themselves. However, I do want to run through a few of these different sizes, finishes, packaging types, just obscure shit and why you want to smoke it, what do you get from it, and maybe what you don't. Right. So one that I've always been fascinated with and I think is easy to really dive into mm -hmm. is this. What the, the hell leaf? is this? That is the Leaf by Oscar. Um, a beautiful cigar, really unique um, wrapping technique. We've all seen cellophane used very well. They decided to go a different direction. Their theory is, is that it holds on to the oil of the tobacco a little bit better. Um, I mean, and, I'll smoke this. And so. I have actually seen people light the cigar just like that. So when he says just like that, I don't know if this camera picks it up. You'll notice you said it's a beautiful cigar, as is in its packaging. It's a shitty looking cigar, shitty, shitty looking cigar. But it is very rustic. And the reason why is because it's actually wrapped in a tobacco leaf itself. Now, why would you do that? Well, what you're gonna notice is the tobacco leaf gets, well, quite dry. Yeah. But the cigar remains very it's, moist. It, it, it does a good job of holding in, holding the humidity inside the cigar. So pretty impressive. It's really impressive. And it reminds me of if you bake cookies and you put them in a Tupperware, and you put a little sh a slice of bread in there, that bread gets dry before the cookies do. So it's, it kind of gives that, to me, that's the analogy I always put. Science. This gets, yes, this gets scienced and this does not get science. This stays smoking. I like it. I like it. So that is, and by the way, there are four different blends inside of the uh, mm -hmm. Oscar line. They all have this packaging. I'm sorry, inside the leaf line. They're all very good. And the beauty is this bit of obscurity, whereas others, 
This bit of obscurity does not cost you extra dollars. No, it doesn't. It's just tobacco laying around the factory. I, for one, am smoking the Jake Wyatt, and this is, I think it's the appendix? Correct. No, it's a lucid interval. Oh, the lucid interval, because this uses, and I don't know if you can see this that well, but it has a green Punch in. wrapper. Got it, punched in. It has a green wrapper. So with the green wrapper, that is called a candela wrapper. And what a candela wrapper is, basically, is tobacco that has, they pulled it out of the curing barn before it really had a chance to turn brown. We have, we have uh, I'm sorry, we're being distracted because we have 72-year-old uh, children that walk through <laughs> this place all the time. But anyway, this, you know, they take that tobacco and they take it into the curing barns and they let that start to start to turn brown. Well, before it really turns completely brown, they basically pull it out and start the fermentation process. So in a sense, stopping it before it gets done. Typically a candela wrapper. Uh, typically you see a lot of manufacturers come out with it about this time of the year as a St. Patrick's Day type of a thing. Um, the wrapper itself is typically pretty passive. It does not have a ton of flavor, but in the case of this Lucid, it is really, really good. But another thing, it might be kind of hard to make out, but if you've seen the Jake Wyatt cigars, the craftsmanship and the artistry that goes into this wrapper and these special elements that they add to it with just adding some different tobacco to it is just beautiful. So really, really nice cigar. And, and there's one other unique thing I'll tell you about it once we get uh, a little further in. So that, yeah, so that's tobacco. What I'm curious is, what is the most unique cigar that you yourself have smoked most obscure looking funkiest size something that's really weird for me and i wish we had it but we smoked it up in 2005 you can google this sopranos or cao came out with the sopranos version that was actually a trunk lid that that was of a 1964 uh continental continental trunk you open that up and inside there's a bottle of dom perignon a, a baseball bullets, bats all sorts of but when we say a baseball bat, it was this big and it was super thick and it was very well crafted. The bottle of Dom looks like a bottle of Dom and at the bottom of it, it's about a 90 ring gauge cigar. That cigar, if you ever see it, don't smoke it. It's a shit cigar. It's yes. one of the worst cigars I've it ever is. smoked. It is, but it is one of the coolest presentations ever. Mm -hmm. The coolest cigar, the most unique cigar that I've ever smoked is a Cuban H. Upman. And, the, and you can get them in cigars that are made in the States as well, but it's called a Picada. And that is a cigar that's twisted into three, three small cigars, like a Lonsdale, smaller cigar. Three cigars that are actually twisted and then tied together at both ends and then allowed to dry. The cigar itself, when you take that knot off and you share it with two other people, are basically doing this real wonky, twisted looking thing. Why? Is that the question you're going to ask? That is exactly. The question you are asking is, why did they do that? Well, the reason they did that is in Cuba, rollers every day could have three cigars that they could smoke. But the factories didn't want them smoking the stuff they're going to sell. So they made these twisted Picada cigars so they knew that when the head of the factories or the, or the bosses of the factories walked through, if they saw you smoking this twisted cigar, they knew that you were smoking your cigar. And if you were smoking this... Odds are you were going to get your pink slip at the end of the day. Wow. And if it was in Cuba, you'd probably be thrown in prison. Wow. But, uh, but I think also another name for that is called a culebra. Culebra. Uh -huh. That's correct. That uh -huh. is right. And that's, that is a, a really cool thing. Yeah, the part against culebras, are, uh, that's exactly right. Chris yep, thank you for because you know Spanish. Um, but you, you said piccata. made me think like chicken piccata. Maybe they weren't allowed to eat chicken piccata That's in Cuba. what it was. That's what it was. That's what that it was. That was way off. So the weirdest, yeah, actually Chris Coulter said the weirdest cigar he smoked is a Partagas Culebra. I, I would have to say. I actually, ha I still have one. We should smoke it. Yeah, we should. Mm -hmm. It's, God, I think it's probably five, six years old. So. What do you think of this new lighter? It's a new lighter. Single beam. But here's what I like about it. It's got a cigar stand on it. Okay. It's a cigar stand. So it has nothing to do with cigars. No. Well, but it if does you have had something. an if you had an obscure cigar and you said, I don't want to set it on this COVID rich ashtray, you can just hang set on, it on your on. lighter. This is an industrial cigar. I, I wiped and sanitized all this. That stuff. I do know that for a fact. So this is clean, not COVID. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Start thinking of your compelling and rich questions too. 
please feel free to bring them in. I understand this looks like a couple of us sitting here smoking cigars, talking nonsense, because it's Tuesday. Cigars 101. We are talking through obscure different cigars and why you should be smoking them. We went through the Leaf by Oscar, mm -hmm. which is obscure because of the wrapper. Mm -hmm. You should smoke it because it's a phenomenal cigar, very balanced. It is a bit of a one-noted note, one cigar, mm -hmm. which doesn't have too much complexity. On the other side, this is a cigar that we that we have and d do very well with, which is the Placencia Alma Fuerte. What's up, Stuart? Uh, this is called the Placencia Alma Fuerte. I'm sure most people have seen this before. It's a cigar that, for me, I really enjoy because I have this slight infatuation with hexagons. Right, yeah. Uh, you'll see it everywhere. But this is a cigar that utilizes a completely different press. Now, if you see a cigar that, that is completely different shape, mm -hmm. chances are give it a smoke because if there's some different shape, what they've had to do is they've had to engineer it. Mm -hmm. Just think of that. You don't you think you just make a different press and it's good and it rocks, but every time you create a new press, you have to see how much tobacco goes in, goes into it. So where it to draws, position right? it? Right? Yep. Where to position the tobacco mm -hmm. so that it blends correctly. But any sort of obscure shape, if it's from any sort of reputable manufacturer, is worth smoking because so much time went into it. Mm -hmm. And um, Julian is the gentleman that is Nestor's cousin that's down there. And he just has this plethora, this room of different types of molds and different types of things that he's run with before. The hexagon is one that does extremely well. Mm. It is, uh, the draw is phenomenal and it's a cigar. It is more expensive for a couple reasons. One, it's a 56 or a 58 ring gauge. 58, yeah. Hex press with a big cigar that uses really, really old tobacco. Really, really old tobacco. And I, I've said it a hundred times, the Placencia factory, Nestor Placencia and his family, fifth generation, um, I think is probably not only the best farmer in Nicaragua, but I'm gonna say maybe the best farmer in the world. They have a great farm in Honduras. The Cavalier uh, cigars come from that, but we have the Crux line, which is made of Placencia, of course, Placencia. The Regis line is also made of Placencia. And I think it's a tribute. When you can take Nicaraguan tobacco and roll that black label Regis and make it taste like the smoothest, creamiest Cuban cigar you've ever tasted, and to accomplish that with Nicaraguan tobacco that typically has that punch, it has the oil, it has the strength, it just goes to show you in the hands of the right farmers that ferment and age their tobacco so perfectly and then put that in the hands of the right blenders. Yep. Man, can they do some amazing things. You know, you, you brushed over a couple of things and we've got a couple of few new people coming in. Welcome for those who are joining. This is our Tuesday. So Ron on is in, one. Ryan is in, so Josh Lynch is in. I want to step back for a second. Okay. If you're, share, if you're watching this, share it because this is valuable information. I, I want to take a slight pivot. Because I realized as you were talking about, you know, it uses Nicaraguan tobacco versus Honduran tobacco versus this. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of times we take that for granted. And I think let's just be as basic, simple, broad stroke general. Mm -hmm. Let's talk just briefly, and I'm talking briefly about every different country or the, the majority of countries. Mm -hmm. What can someone expect out of Nicaraguan tobacco? Let's start there because really we have Nicaragua, Dominican, Ecuador, uh, Cuba, we have Honduras, we have a number of different countries tobacco right. comes from. But right in the now, US. Right now, we're really focused on some big ones. So, Nicaragua tobacco, mm -hmm. what can someone expect when smoking a Nicaraguan cigar? Well, there's, there's four growing regions in Nicaragua, but for the most part, the majority of the soil, and it's, and really, ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the soil. But in Nicaragua, it's primar primarily volcanic, um, volcanic ash that has permeated that, that soil. It's very dark, it's very rich, very nutrient rich, and these plants require a lot of nutrients. Typically, without getting into details of each growing region, the Nicaraguan tobacco is gonna be uh, typically gonna sit fuller, it's gonna sit heavier on your palate, typically will have more oil in the plant itself, when you get up into the Lajero, it is the typically will have more punch than if you're going to use like a Lajero out of 
um, Mexico so, or you usually so who, hear of. So who would, how would somebody identify whether they would, how would, how would they know if their palate wants Nicaraguan tobacco is a question. Well, and I, I think, I, I had this conversation with a, a newbie on Saturday and we actually got him a, a cigar from Mexico. We got him a Chacero. We got him a, a Dominican cigar and a Principal. And we got him a Nicaraguan cigar. And then we got him a cigar from Crown Heads, the La Coliacion, because that has a little bit of everything in it. And, and, and sent him home with kind of homework to pay attention to which cigar that he likes. Now, strength-wise, they were all kind of a five or six, strength-wise, but I wanted him to be able to taste the different characteristics of that. But how, if you were listening, you clean the fucking fat out of your ears. Yeah. What I'm saying is, <laughs> how would somebody know whether they're gonna like, if you, I see you line it up. Don't smack me, it's not started at the shop. How would somebody know if they're gonna like Nicaragua tobacco? I don't know, how does somebody know they like a fucking chocolate shake? Well, first off, <laughs> okay. So that wasn't a fart, that was a chair. All right, look. <laughs> so, so he here's says. how you know. If you like black coffee, if you like higher proof bourbon and whiskey, uh -huh. if you like something that has a lot of flavor that comes to you, think hot, spicy food. If you're somebody that likes to be challenged with your palate and anything that you experience, Nicaraguan is for you. On the other side, mm -hmm. as you talk about Nicaraguan being fuller, now let's just throw that disclaimer out again. This is all generalized, and there are a lot of changes that you can do. Of, yeah. Now, on that same token, because we're on Fuller, maybe Gary brought up a good point here. USA Tobacco. Yes. What can someone expect out of USA, United States of the Americas, tobacco? Well, there is Connecticut Broadleaf that's grown in Connecticut. There's Pennsylvania Broadleaf that's obviously grown in Pennsylvania. That has a ton of oil. It holds a ton of oil, particularly Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Typically used for wrapper, there is a lot of it that is used for filler, but very dark, a Liga 9, um, some of the Romacraft stuff, a lot of the Tatuaje stuff, all has that Pennsylvania Broadleaf, rich foundation, rich, full. Most of it is picked in Pennsylvania and shipped to Nicaragua or shipped to the Dominican so yep. that it can be used on their cigars, primarily again for wrapper. Um, Connecticut, there's Connecticut, there's Connecticut shade grown tobacco that is going to be lighter, uh, more mild, but then there is Connecticut sun grown tobacco or Connecticut um, uh, uh, broadleaf that is also very dense, rich, very oily. I, I remember talking to a guy that came in here that grew up on a tobacco farm in Pennsylvania and talked about how he, they would throw that bale over their shoulders and their whole shirt was just oil just coated in oil at the end of the day because oh, wow. it was just so dense with nutrients. And that's, now, again, the, soil driven. Now, the problem is, and, and this is, when it comes to USA, when it really comes to USA tobacco, here's the challenge that we find with it. As opposed to Nicaragua, Honduras, it, you think of that Latin American stretch, they have a very predictable climate. In the United States, we have some years that get sub-freezing, i.e. last week. Mm -hmm. You see all of these different changes, and it fluctuates the yield, it fluctuates the tobacco. Now, it's great because the changes makes a, a ton of change in the tobacco itself. However, because of the seasonality where you can't get two grows like you can in Latin countries, right. you can only get one grow. One season, right? One season. And if it's a bad season, it creates this shortage that is a massive shortage. And I think that's naturally, be, and, and it naturally transitions itself to talk about why you're seeing more tobacco coming from Mexico. Mm -hmm. So what, what can someone expect out of another country of Mexico right. and their tobacco? So. So Mexico, there's the San Andreas region of Mexico. It's in the southern part of the country. And typically what you're going to see is you're kind of getting close to that when you're starting to get into the Honduras area and Nicaragua. You're starting to pick up some of the, the traits. Um, typically that tobacco from a feel perspective is, is what's called toothier, but it feels more like sandpaper. 
But I find that the that a good San Andreas Maduro wrapper, which uh, Padron uses on their Maduros, uh, the Cohiba Maduro Number Five, Cuban uses uh, actually a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. So you have this beautiful wrapper, but it actually comes across a little sweeter, and it and it's not as oily as something. But it'll scare you if you're a newbie, mm-hmm. because if you walk up and see a cigar that's got a Mexican San Andreas wrapper on it, you're thinking this thing's going to kill me. But you smoke a Crux Epicure Maduro that has that beautiful San Andreas on it. It's just a perfect medium, really, really floral, just a beautiful, beautiful cigar. To me, that is the the closest to to a very nice, very well roasted coffee, mm-hmm. where you get the sweet that sweetness, that ring of it, but you get the intensity of the flavor. Right, Mexican, without without uh, bitterness, mm-hmm. you know, without that bitterness. So um, Nathan makes a point here. He says, "I couldn't tell you what kind of leaf is in the cigar. I like." Uh, I just like them, so I, which makes sense. That's where the challenge comes, and and what what we would challenge you to do is get a Nicaraguan cigar, get a Dominican cigar, and smoke the two at the same time. Maybe just a Corona or a Robusto, so you're not smoking something that's for a long time. But smoke the two at the same time, so you can see some of those differences that are going to happen when you start comparing. Uh, Countries of origin. Yep. Most, and these are, this is of course getting into some details and those who are still hanging with us, I appreciate it. Um, those are, this is really when you get into the details of it, it's, it does make a difference, mm-hmm. but you really have to know, you, you have to really give a shit. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's, it is important to know some of the basic things. You spoke about Nicaraguan being fuller, United States usually being fuller, as long as it's not a, Regular now, now, can I just add, there's one little caveat. There's um, actually the owner of Corona Cigars, um, Jeff, has a uh, actually activated a farm that hasn't grown tobacco in Florida since the 40s. And he started growing Florida sun-grown tobacco there. And that particular tobacco is really nice because it's south. It gets that same salty air that is and that humidity and that water, the rain and everything that you're going to pick up, almost like what you would pick up in Cuba, and you get that benefit. It's going to be more of a sandy soil, and it's just one of those things that it really makes a really nice tobacco, and it is obviously grown here in the States. Yep, but who is that, Nathan Allen? Mm -hmm. Nathan, yes, you're right. It doesn't really matter as long as you're you're enjoying what you like. Right. And what is cool is if you get an idea of the country of origin or anything there, it gives you a good way to catalog. If you like this, you will also like this. Mm-hmm. And what I notice is the people who gravitate towards one style, they're they're gonna like everything that's down the road. Yeah. I.e. Dominican Republic. Yep. The Dominican is kind of where my heart. That's that's what I really enjoy. That's where my palate sits. For those of for those who may be familiar, those are may be familiar with the Fuentes. You may be familiar with from the smaller side, Pator Principle. If you know our stuff. But dab it off, dab it off. Mm-hmm. You get into something that has a little bit more elegance mm-hmm. to it. I think that's the best way that I can. Uh, yeah, to me, the to, the tobacco can the tobacco kind of. Uh, God, this, this doesn't this doesn't sound right, but the there there isn't an aggressive element to the tobacco that it lets you taste the tobacco. Whereas you know, if you can imagine a, a taco loaded with habanero. There's, there's something in there that's taking away from the flavor of everything else. And to me, a Nicaraguan tobacco that's oilier, like in a Placenci or something, that to me has that heavy oil that kind of gets in the way of really good tobacco flavor. Uh-huh. I like the flavor of the tobacco. And my palate, I, I rode that roller coaster from mild up to, to strong. And I kind of came back down into the middle, which is where a lot of the Dominican cigars, our house cigar, um, well, it is, is sits in that lane. And here's a good test for you. If you're sitting at home, you're smoking a cigar with us, we appreciate you doing that. Here's a good way to test. Retrohale your cigar. So when you, when you bring that in and you exhale it, you, you release that. As you get to the last 20% or so, push that through your nose. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a big difference because Nicaraguan tobacco, you'll experience. Your oh, palate you'll, will you'll light up. It. Your nose will light up. 
Dominican tobacco, you'll taste. Right. That's the way I, when I'm blind tasting and I'm trying to find the difference, I'm going to go, am I experiencing this or am I tasting this? And that's going to tell me right. country of origin, basically, where it's going to be a difference. There, and, and just as a side note, there's one phenomenon that happens, and I've only experienced it with Jake Wyatt cigars, and I don't know how they do it, but I've smoked and I try to retrohale, particularly when we're analyzing cigars, bring that in, release it through your nose, and it actually kind of cranks up the attention that your palate, it, your, all of a sudden your palate pays twice as much attention, mm -hmm. if not more. But there are some cigars, and there's some on this table, that I know if I pull that in, and I feel the impact on my palate, my mind is saying, do not push that out your nose. Because you're gonna, you're gonna be crying in a minute. Yep. This cigar, and, and all of the cigars in their line, even some of them as you, get further, as you get further up, like the Herbert Spencer, when you pull those in, it's, your brain is saying, do not push this through your nose. But when you do, it like let's say it comes in as a six, it leaves as a one. And I have never had a cigar, and I've had, like Greg Stockard mentioned this too. He's like, have you retrohaled this Jake Wyatt? It, I've never experienced anything like it. It is a cigar that is just disconnects. Your brain is thinking one thing's going to happen, and it just doesn't. Yep. It's crazy. So, Nathan, you asked a question over here, and please feel free to ask questions as you're watching. Uh, what's in the frothy monkey? It's predominantly Dominican tobacco. It might actually be 100% Dominican, but I the wrapper is. they used is called a katui. Mm -hmm. Let's speak Greek for a second. A katui wrapper is from a very small place in the Dominican Republic, and it's unique because it gives you this very pinpointed effervescent type of experience yep. where it rings. It lights your palate up in such a unique way where there's flavor, and a little bit of bite, but it's just like putting the right amount of salsa on. It's just enough to have a little bite to it, but you're still there and experiencing it. That's what really the magic within that frothy monkey is. We got a lot of guys that are leaving and coming back, leaving and coming back. I wonder if we're dropping. Are we dropping you guys? Um, but Misty is in. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Dennis Harper is in. Sam Owens is in. JP, Tim is in. JP's in over here. JP and his balls or just JP? We gotta quit giving credit to his balls. That's true. Um, but uh, so tonight we're talking about obscure cigars, and uh, of course we're on deck to answer any questions that you guys might have. And JP, actually, this is a perfect explanation to our earlier thing. Is JP said no such thing as too much salsa, and if you take that into into play into consideration of the cigars he likes to smoke, generally they're bigger, fuller cigars. Mm -hmm. So it is more on the Nicaraguan side, although he does have a number of lighter cigars that he smokes. If your answer is there can never be too much salsa, think Nicaragua, think mm -hmm. Broadleaf, think the bigger, fuller cigars. Yep. yep. Now, as we talked about obscure cigars, I did bring this one. And although the cigar may not be obscure in and of itself, it is the Zeno Platinum Z Crown. Right. This comes in a coffin. It's a whole deal. It comes in a box of 10. And the box of 10 comes in at a smooth $1,000. Smooth 1000 So it's a, it's a $100 cigar. Now, I'm curious as to your take on this. Is why, from an obscurity perspective, why would somebody spend $100? Why would a cigar be $100? And how can they understand, or how can someone pick out whether they should spend $100 on a cigar? Uh, <laughs> it's a good question why you should spend $100 on a cigar. There's, uh, now, Zeno is a division, falls underneath the same umbrella as Davidoff. Um, in, in my opinion, Davidoff makes a good cigar. I just think that they're a little overpriced. In some cases, you'll see what they... What they uh, promote, I don't want to say brag about, but what they promote is like, for example, their Oro Blanco, 12-year-old tobacco, 12-year-old tobacco. Now, to babysit tobacco at a factory for 12 years is an amazing thing. Use high-quality tobacco, let it sit, let it age. The older it gets, the better it gets. And so that's one of the things that they do. Now, 
you know, we also we have our own cigar that's got a 15 year old wrapper and 15 year old filler on it. It's really good. It's not five hundred dollars. Right. It is. You know. So the the fact is, is there um, there's a there's a big part of the cost of a cigar is the cost of the overhead that the company carries. So coffins and lacquered uh, humidors in um, you know what they're going to say is six and eight or ten year old tobacco is going to be something that is now it's 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 a good cigar to me it's a little bit more on the mild side mm -hmm. but um it we sell them uh people buy them. people buy them. Mm -hmm. it is it is wild i couldn't imagine spending a hundred dollars on a cigar that's not over a hundred years old but it is it is uh, it's available and it is in all honesty, it's the popcorn method. If you go to, if you go to a movie theater, a popcorn, which RIP movie theaters, but if you go to movie theater, that most expensive popcorn is what, $15? Yeah. The cheapest is $12? Mm. But then you go, well, shit, if it's 15, then I'll, I've got no problem spending, yeah. maybe I'll just shoot it in the middle, mm. you know, cause I'll get quite in the middle. But if you have production cigars at $100 and people are buying them, well, then that $12 cigar that it sits next to all of a sudden looks like a bargain. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a marketing tool. And in, in, in all honesty, they're going to use, they're not going to shortcut the tobacco. They're not going to do it. But no. just know that if you're looking at a $100 cigar, it is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be great. Uh, but there are other tactics that they're using to, yeah, to do Yeah, I... I, I I can tell you right now that there's a handful of thirty dollars cigars. I would, I would, I would put you in three cigars for the same hundred dollars that I think you would have uh, a better journey with. Um, yep. But it's you know it is uh, we have a lot of people that that buy them. Personally, if I'm going to spend a hundred dollars, I'm buying a pre embargo Cuban that's eighty years old and having an experience. Yep, I agree. Which we have those two, by the way. Yep. I agree. So there, there are a number of different cigars that are obscure, that are different within the shapes, within everything that we do. Uh, and, and just know, if there's something out there that goes and grabs you when you're looking at it, you want to try it? Smoke it. Try it. Try it. So I think that's probably the key for the day is if you see a cigar in the humidor and it talks to you, grab it, try it. The worst thing that happens is you put it down. Yeah. And... You know, to uh, put in our shameless plug, one of the things that we do is we do evaluate the cigars. We wade through a lot of not so good cigars in order to make sure that what you're choosing from has met our requirements. And we have two primary requirements. One half is flavor, one half is performance. You want a cigar that's gonna draw good, that's gonna have a good ash line. I mean, this thing, I had to literally break the ash off of this thing. I think it would've went the whole way. But, um, and then we look at the value. There are, some, there are some cigars that we get from name brand companies that are high volume guys and, and we'll smoke their 16 or $17 cigar and it's really good. But then we go, what is it? Is it better than the $12 principle? Yep. And that's, that's where we weigh it. Now, from a business perspective, does it make sense for us to sell you a $17 cigar than a 12? Yeah, I guess in theory, but we would rather you have the best experience you can for the money, for the least amount of money as possible. And then you'll come back and you'll buy some more and it all works out. That's it. So with that, come in, smoke cigars with us, smoke the funky stuff, and yeah, that's absolutely. It. Have a good time. Any other questions out there? Nathan here just said, uh, I usually talk to y'all, never gotten a bad pick. And with that, we're cutting it early. We should. We will.